So here is another way we could have written the prime product function. Instead of having a helper function to check if uh, a given number is prime, you will see that I have an inner for loop that does the same task. So I have two for loops here and the question is, is this pattern one or pattern two? Well, it takes a little bit of effort to recognize that the inner loop is pattern one, but it's much easier to see that the outer loop is pattern two. So let's start there. Firstly, remember in pattern two, we are accumulating something and we can see that we have our accumulator variable product set to one. Then we look at each i in data and finally we accumulate i in the product, in this case by multiplying. So that is the familiar accumulator pattern. But what about this inner loop and what about this curious syntax where we have an else associated with a for loop? We have seen an else associated with an if condition but Python allows us the possibility of associating an else even with a for loop. And the meaning of this is as follows. You see here we are going to examine uh, various values of j. If we ever find a value of j that is a factor of i, meaning i remainder j is zero, then we will come into this if condition and we will encounter this statement. A break statement exits this loop. Now since this loop is sitting inside this outer loop, it's important to remember that this break statement will exit this inner loop only. Now where exactly will control flow after hitting this break? To explain that, let me first explain what would happen if this condition was never true. In that case, we would have tried all these different values of j and finally, when there were no more values of j to try, we would have exited the loop normally without ever encountering this break statement. So the meaning of this else statement is actually to handle the situation where we did not encounter any break. That's why I have this comment over here, no break. In fact, when the designers of Python were considering what to use over here as a keyword, they did consider using no break as a brand new keyword. Finally, the decision was made to use else instead. And this captures the situation where the iteration happened and there was no break encountered while doing any of these iterations. If that happens, then the loop exits normally and we will come here. And in this case, we know that this value i is a prime. Why is it a prime? Well, firstly, it is greater than or equal to two. And secondly, we scanned through all these different values of j and none of those were a factor of i, so this value i must be a prime and then we can take that and multiply it into our accumulator. On the other hand, if we ever did encounter a break, we would not go into this else. This else is reserved for the situation where no breaks are encountered. So if we did encounter this break, we would exit this loop and we would go to the next statement after else. Well, there is no next statement immediately after else. And so we would be at the end of the if, and that means we would be at the end of the outermost for. So this is a bit tricky. If you encounter the break statement, control actually flows back up to the top and we examine the next value of i. Since this is tricky, let's actually take a look at this code executing on Python Tutor. 